Hi everybody, this is Eric Halterman of Rotowire.com here with your weekly dose of fantasy baseball waiver wire pickups. We've got a pair of hitters and a pair of pitchers today, each of whom is available in at least 70% of ESPN leagues as of recording. Let's start this week with Mariners outfielder Jake Fraley. Fraley was an opening day starter for the Mariners, but played just five games before missing nearly two months with a hamstring strain. What he's done in 15 games since returning to action, however, is definitely worth taking notice of. He's hitting 311, 475, 600 with four homers and three steals in those 15 contests. We shouldn't get too ahead of ourselves. Uh, he projected as just a bench outfielder with a bit of speed, but not elite speed and nothing too special in the bat. Uh, but the way his recent hot streak has happened doesn't look like luck at all. Instead, he's shown elite plate discipline, walking in over 28% of his plate appearances while striking out in less than 22%. I would certainly expect him to fall off somewhat, and there's a chance if you do pick him up that you're dropping him again in a few weeks if he does revert to being just a fourth outfielder. But that elite plate discipline backing up this hot streak definitely makes me want to uh, take a chance and try to see if this actually is a whole new level for Fraley. Next, we'll move into the infield and talk about Rockies middle infielder Brendan Rodgers. Rodgers is uh, mostly included here under the theory that anyone who has a regular role at Coors Field uh, is worth looking into. Uh, and that certainly describes him. He started 16 of the Rockies' last 20 games as a recording. But he's also a talented player himself. He was supposed to be quite a big prospect. He was the third overall pick back in 2015. Supposed to hit for both power and average while playing a decent shortstop. He's still just 24, but his career has been derailed by injuries so far, including pretty significant shoulder issues in each of the last two years. But this season, uh, he started out not well at all, just with 418 OPS in his first 10 games. But over his last 11 contests, he's got an OPS of 1092 with three homers. It's not the biggest of samples for Rodgers by any means, but anytime you get a guy who was supposed to be talented that seems to be showing off that talent and gets to play his home games at Coors Field, I want to jump in. Uh, next, we'll move to the mound and talk about Mariners righty Logan Gilbert. Gilbert is actually the first uh, repeat name in this video series. I talked about him uh, just before his Major League debut, which didn't go particularly well. Neither did either of his next two starts, so if you picked him up then and dropped him after those three, all you got was a 7.59 ERA and a 1.41 whip. But he did show something in that stretch, 11 strikeouts against just two walks in 10 two-thirds innings. Over his last three starts, he's been much better. A 2.04 ERA, a whip just under one, 18 strikeouts in 17 and two-thirds innings. And that guy, I think, is a lot closer to what we should expect from him going forward. Even if you combine the bad with the good, he has a 24.2% strikeout rate on the season with a walk rate under 7%. That's quite a strong combination. Uh, ground ball rate below 30% is a worry, but he's at least gets to pitch at a pitcher friendly home park where he should get hurt less by those fly balls. Uh, fewer of them should be homers than elsewhere. And that really goes for many parks in the AL West. And finally, we'll go to Astros righty, Jake Odorizzi. Odorizzi is another guy who may have been drafted this season and then dropped after a poor start. Uh, and that poor start really matched what he did last year in an injury filled season where he only took the mound four times. If you combine those four starts with his first four this year, you get a 690 ERA, which is obviously not something you want anything close to your team. But he's finally starting to show something over his last two outings, which includes one start and one four inning relief appearance. On those two outings, he's given up three runs on five hits over nine innings, striking out nine and walking just one. Over his first eight seasons, he had a 388 ERA. And some of the ERA estimators this year, even though he has a 568 ERA given that poor start, uh, have him in that similar range. Actually, XERA has him almost as an exact match at 383. Striking out 24.8% of opposing batters on the year, which is the second best mark of his career, uh, with a walk rate of just 7.6%. So again, not, not the longest resurgence for Odorizzi, but if he is back to his usual form, you definitely want him on your team, and I'd be looking at picking him up now before somebody else does.